Hi, this is Professor Evans. This video is for EET 1214C, which is Intro to Engineering Technology at Valencia College. And in this video, we are going to discuss combinational logic. So our objectives for this video are that by the end, you'll be able to create a truth table for a combinational logic circuit, up to three inputs and four gates, and be able to write the output expression for a combinational logic circuit with up to three inputs and four gates. And then for our lab, we will be constructing a combinational logic circuit using multisim as well as the bench. In this video, we're gonna cover bullets one and two, and then the third bullet is covered in separate videos that are found on my channel. So in the previous video related to digital circuits, we discussed the and, the or, and the not gate. And we discussed how each one had a truth table, a symbol, and an expression. Well, we're going to talk today about circuits that have a combination of AND, OR, and NOT gates. And those circuits might have more than two inputs. So, so far we've talked about the AND gate and the OR gate that had a truth table with two inputs. But you can have a digital circuit with as many inputs as you want. So first we're gonna answer the question, how do I write a truth table for a circuit that has more than two inputs? So let's review our two input truth table. We have an example here for a particular logic function. The function isn't important, we're just looking at the truth table. So if I have two inputs, I'm going to have inputs A and B, and my four possible input combinations are 0 and 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then I'll have my outputs written here. Let's say that I go from a circuit that has two inputs to a circuit that has three inputs. Now look at the truth table. It's going to get a little bit bigger. We've got our three inputs along the top, inputs A, B, and C. And then we'll have our output based off of that combination of inputs. So notice in the first example, I had two inputs, four rows. In the second example, I have three inputs, eight rows, eight rows. Let's say that I make the circuit even bigger and now I have four inputs, A, B, C, and D. Now I'm going to have 16 rows in my truth table. So as I add more inputs, my truth table is going to have a larger number of rows. And remember, each row represents a unique combination of those inputs. So if I have four inputs, for example, I'm gonna start with them all being low, and I'm gonna work through every possible combination of those inputs until they're all high. So let's look at the relationship here. Two inputs, four rows. Three inputs, eight rows. Four inputs, 16 rows. If you can try to think of a relationship between the inputs and the number of rows, what might you come up with? So I gave you a second to try to think about that. In this case, we can see that the number of rows is, is an exponential function. So we can say that if the number of inputs is n, we're gonna have two to the n rows. It's an exponential function. So if the number of inputs is two, we're gonna have two to the two rows, four rows. If the number of inputs is three, we have two to the third, eight, eight rows. If the number of inputs is four, we have two to the four rows. So inputs and rows have a relationship. The number of inputs is gonna dictate the number of rows. So the number of rows is two to the n, where n is number of inputs. So that's the first thing we need to know to make our truth table. The next thing we need to know is, now that I know how many rows, how do I fill it in properly? In digital systems, you're gonna learn how to count in binary. If you already know how to count in binary, then you'll see that your truth table begins at 0, 0, 0, 0, and counts up in binary. If you don't know how to count up in binary, that's fine. I'm gonna show you how to fill this in using a pattern. So I want you to look at our first truth table here with four rows. Notice that input B is one zero one one all the way down. Input A is two zeros, two ones. Now let's look at our three input. Starting with the input on the right, one zero one one all the way down one of each. Then we go to input B, two of each. 
two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones. Then we go to input A, four of each, four zeros, four ones. Again, an exponential, exponential relationship here where I can use a pattern to determine how to fill in each column with my inputs. If we go to the fourth one, I'm sorry, the third one here, go to the fourth input, one zero, one one, all the way down. Go to the third input, two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones. Go to the second input, four of each. And then go to the first, eight zeros, eight ones. So one of each, two of each, four of each, eight of each. That is how you can remember the pattern for filling in the inputs. No matter what type of circuit you have, no matter what it's supposed to do, the way you fill in the inputs will never change. It's the output that's going to change because the output depends on how the circuit is connected. But it doesn't matter what kind of circuit you have. If you have a circuit with three inputs, you're going to have a truth table with eight rows. And remember that that truth table is like a roadmap. It tells me what the output is supposed to be based on the combination of inputs. And it tells me what's going to happen for every single possible combination. So this is how we're setting up the truth table for the inputs. And today we're also going to talk about how do we determine the output based on how the circuit is wired. So let's talk about OR gates that can have more than two inputs. An OR gate can have any number of inputs. For example, here's a three input OR gate where we have three inputs A, B, and C. The output is equal to A or B or C. How would I make my truth table for an OR gate? Well, I'm going to make sure that I have my three inputs across the top. My three inputs tells me that I have eight rows. I'm going to fill in those eight rows with the pattern. One, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, two zeros. I'm sorry, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, all the way down. Two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, all the way down. Four zeros, four ones. I'm going to fill in those inputs no matter what type of gate I have. Then I'm going to fill in the output based on the logic. In this case, the logic that we previously discussed is that an OR gate has an output of high as long as any input is high. So if I have three inputs, that same logic applies. The output is going to be high as long as at least one input is high. And we can see that for the first row, we have no inputs high, so the output is low. And then for every other row, there's at least one input that is high, so the output is high. This is how we fill in the truth table for a three input OR gate. If I was gonna do a three input AND gate, I have the same idea. I'm going to start my truth table by writing my inputs across the top, and then I'm gonna fill in my rows. Again, I'm using the pattern to fill this in. Even though it's an AND gate, the inputs are the same. It's the same possible combinations. So I'm gonna use the pattern, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, all the way down, two zeros, two ones, four zeros, four ones, and that input is not gonna change. What's gonna change is the output. So for an AND gate with three inputs, the output is A and B and C, and we're gonna apply the same logic of AND from our two input AND to the three input AND. So what we previously discussed is that the output of an AND gate is high as long as all the inputs are high, or you could say the output of an AND gate is low as long as at least one input is low. So if we take that logic and apply it to our inputs, we can see there's only one time where all three inputs are high, and that's on the very last row. So we know that output is going to be high. Every other row has at least one low input. So we know the outputs are all going to be low for a three input AND gate all the way up until that very last row. Now, on your paper, I want you to practice making a truth table for the four input OR gate and the four input AND gate. Think about how we use the pattern that was described to set up a four input truth table, and then how do we apply the logic of OR to a four input OR gate or a four input AND gate? So take a second to pause this video, fill those out, make sure that you can create those truth tables on your own, and then when you're ready, unpause to see the solutions. So here's our four input OR truth table and our four input AND truth table. 
Remember the pattern when we set up a four input truth table. We're going to label our inputs across the top. We're going to start with the one all the way on the right. And we're going to use that pattern 1011, 1011, all the way down. Then we have two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, all the way down. Four zeros, four ones, all the way down. Eight zeros, eight ones, all the way down. So you'll notice that the four input or and the four input and, the inputs look exactly the same. It's only the output column that's going to differ because we're basing the output on what sort of logic is being applied to the inputs. So in the left, we're applying the um, four inputs to an OR gate. So you'll see that the same logic applies. The output is high as long as at least one input is high. And with an AND gate, the output is high only when all of the outputs are high. I'm sorry, the output is high as long as all of the inputs are high. So make sure that you are comfortable making a truth table for two inputs, three inputs, or four inputs as we continue through this lesson. Now let's talk about combinational logic. When we have a combinational logic circuit, we can wire a group of and, or, and not gates together to accomplish a certain function. And once we wire this group of and, or, and not gates together, we're gonna to use a truth table to illustrate how that circuit will work for any given set of inputs. That's the whole idea behind a truth table. So here's our first example of a combinational logic circuit. We have two inputs, A and B. They're going into an AND gate. The output of the AND gate is going into an OR gate with a third input called input C. So we can see that the output feeds in as an input to something else. That's combinational logic. What we're going to do is write the truth table and the output expression for this circuit. We have three inputs. So first, I want you to make sure you know how many rows do you need? With three inputs, we need eight rows. So you're going to start with a truth table that has your inputs labeled across the top and those eight rows. Then you're going to add one column for every gate that you see in the picture. In this case, I have an AND gate, and then I have an OR gate. And I'm going to add a column for the output of that AND gate, and a, the column here is the output of the OR gate. Now keep in mind that the output of this AND gate, the expression for that would be A and B. So I have A and B written here. And that tells me that I'm going to be writing the output of this gate using inputs A and B and the logic function of AND to write the outputs here. The last output is going to be A and B or C because A and B goes into an OR gate with C and this is how we would write that output expression. Now order of operations applies to digital logic the same way it applies in algebra. So multiplication comes before addition in algebra. So AND comes before OR in digital logic. You can add parentheses to show precedent as well. So the parentheses here aren't exactly necessary because AND comes before OR but I'm just showing that you can also add parentheses to show what came first. In this case, the AND gate came before the OR gate. So we have our output expression right here. This is our output expression. This is how we would write it. And now we're going to fill in these columns one at a time. So first I'm gonna fill in the A and B column. That means I'm gonna look at input A, I'm gonna look at input B, and I'm gonna apply that logic function AND and I'm gonna fill this out one by one. So for example, zero and zero gives me a zero. So I'm gonna fill that out there. So in the next slide, what you're gonna see is this column filled out using that idea of and. So we have zero and zero gives me a zero. Zero and zero gives me a zero. Zero and one gives me a zero. Zero and one gives me a zero. One and zero gives me a zero. One and zero gives me a zero. One and one, remember an AND gate has an M output of high when all the inputs are high. So now here's our scenario where we have an output of high for the last two rows because A and B are both high. So I know the output of this AND gate is in this column right here. And now that output becomes an input to the OR gate. So when I use 
the final column in my truth table, I'm going to be taking this input, which is this column right here, and I'm going to OR that column together with input C. So now I'm looking at these two columns and I'm applying OR to those two columns. So I'm going to go 0 OR 0 equals 0. 1 OR 0 equals 1. 0 OR 0 equals 0. 1 OR 0 equals 1. 0 OR 0 equals 0. 1 OR 0 equals 1. 0 OR 1 equals 1 and 1 or 1 equals 1. Now I have the output for this circuit, which means I can go build this circuit. I can connect inputs A, B, and C to a switch, for example. And as I move those switches to the low or high positions, I know what the output is supposed to be according to my truth table. So the truth table is again my roadmap letting me know exactly what, can I, what I can expect as the output of my circuit for each set of inputs. So that's example one. Let's do example two. In this example, I have two inputs, A and B, going into an OR gate. Then the output of that OR gate is inverted. Then the output of the inverter goes to an AND gate with a third input, input C, and there's my final output. So let's make our truth table. We have three inputs. That means I am again going to have eight rows. And then I'm going to have one column for each gate. The first column is for the OR gate. The second column here is for the inverter. So remember when we have an inverter, we write an overbar. That overbar goes over the group. A and B goes into the OR gate, comes out as a group. So the bar goes over that as a group. And then that group goes into the AND gate with C. So now I have this group A or B that is inverted and then ANDed with C. So now I've got three columns and I'm going to fill in those columns one at a time, starting with what's coming out of the OR gate. The OR gate is A or B. So I'm going to take column A, column B, and I'm going to OR them together one row at a time. So I can see that the output here, 0 or 0 gives me 0, 0 or 0 gives me 0, 0 or 1 gives me 1, 0 or 1 gives me 1, 1 or 0 gives me 1, 1 or 0 gives me 1, and the last two rows both have 1s, so our output is 1. Next, we're going to invert the output of the OR gate. Invert just means flip it. Every 0 becomes a 1, every 1 becomes a 0. So I'm just going to flip everything in this column. And then lastly, I'm going to take this column, which is what's going into the AND gate. I'm going to take this column and I'm going to apply AND to that column along with input C. Notice I've got two columns that are separated here, so you might want to add some arrows to your paper to make sure you look at the right columns when you do this last step. So I'm going to do this column ANDed with this column. So I have 0 and 1 is 0. I have 1 and 1 gives me a 1. And then I can see that this column is always 0 going all the way down. I know that it's going into an AND gate, and if one input to an AND gate is 0, the output's going to be 0. So I almost don't even need to look at column C, because from this point forward, I know the output of the AND gate has to be zero because one of the inputs is zero right here. So I've got all these zeros here. And now we have the truth table and the expression for our second circuit. Take a minute to try this example on your own and then I will show you the solution. But I recommend hitting pause right now, making the truth table and the expression for this circuit and before you do that, I want to point out one thing that might look different. We have these little red circles on here. These are called nodes. A node is a connection point. This node represents the fact that input B is going into two places. Input B is going into this AND gate as well as into that AND gate. I have another node right here that tells me A is going into two places. A is going into this AND gate as well as this OR gate. So knowing that information, hit pause and try to figure out the truth table and the expression for this circuit. And when you're ready, come back to see the solution.
So here's my truth table with my eight rows. Inputs A, B, and C are set up. And then I've got one column for each gate. One column for this AND gate, one column for this AND gate, one column for the final OR gate, which is going to OR three things together. The output of this AND gate is A and B. The output of this AND gate is B and C. And then I'm ORing those together with input A. So our output is A and B, OR, B and C, OR A. Here's my first column, A and B. Here's my second column, B and C. And here's my third column where I OR all three of those together. I have A and B, ORed with B and C, ORed with input A. Now we're going to go the other way. Let's say that I give you the expression and I want you to draw the circuit instead and then make the truth table. So let's practice going the other way. In this expression, I have x equals, and then I have a bunch of things underneath an overbar. The fact that I have a big long group of things underneath an overbar tells me that the inversion is the last thing to happen. So I know the inverter will go last. Before the inverter, I have a and b and and then I have parentheses telling me that this comes first. So the C or D comes first. All of that goes into an AND gate with A and B. And then all of that is inverted. So now we're going to draw that out. So on your paper, I want you to practice drawing the circuit for this expression. And this is what you'll get. Here's the AND for A and B. Here's the OR for C and D. And then those two things are going to be anded together. So we have A and B and C or D. And then all of that is inverted. So we have an inverter and there's our output X. So there's our schematic for this circuit. Next, we're going to draw the truth table. So before you draw your truth table, make sure you know how many inputs do I have and how many rows do I need. In this case, you have four inputs. So you need 16 rows. So now I'm going to have a bigger truth table. Here's my 16 rows with inputs A, B, C, and D. And I filled in each column using the pattern that we discussed earlier in the video. Then I have one column for each gate. I have the column for the AND gate, A and B. I have the column for the OR gate, C or D. I have the column where I AND these two groups together. And then I have a column where I invert it. Notice I have all of this as a group and then an apostrophe. An apostrophe is another way to show inversion. So you can use the overbar, but if you're typing, it is easier to put a group of things inside of a parenthesis or a bracket and then add an apostrophe to show that that group was inverted. So that's why I have that here. Then I'm going to go one column at a time and fill in each column. So I'm going to first do A and B, which I can sort of look forward and see, well, a is zero all the way up until here. So I know the first eight rows have to be zero because that's going into an AND gate. Then I can see I have another group of four zeros right here for B. So I know that, well, now I'm going down to row 12. I'm going to have zeros because at least one of these inputs is zero. And then for the last four rows, both the inputs are high. So I know the output for that AND gate will be high. Next, I'm going to do my C or D column. So I'm going to take column C and D and I'm going to OR them together. And I can see that anytime C and D are both low, I get a low. Otherwise, if at least one of them is high, I get a high. Now I'm going to AND my first two output columns together. I'm going to AND A and B with C or D. And I can see that there's only three instances where they're both high, and that is right down here at the bottom. Otherwise, at least one of these inputs is low. And then lastly, I'm going to invert that column so that I can get the output, because remember, we're right here in the circuit, and now we're going to invert that output and get our final output x. So each one in this column is inverted to a 0, and each 0 in this column is inverted to a 1, and now I have my final output. For our final example, we have another circuit where we are given the expression and then we have to draw that image of the circuit and then create its truth table. 
So test your knowledge right now by hitting pause and drawing the circuit for this expression as well as creating the truth table. When you're ready, come back and see what the answer is and see if you were right. So with this circuit, I have M or N all underneath an overbar. So I know that M and N have to go into an OR gate and then become inverted. I also have a group over here. I have P, which has an inversion. So I have to invert P and then AND it with Q. And then I have to OR these two groups together. So let's see what that would look like. First, I'm going to have M or N going into my OR gate. So there's M or N. And here's where it gets inverted, right there. Then I have P, which gets inverted. So P goes in, not P comes out, going into the AND gate with Q. So now I have these two pieces. I have this piece, I have this piece, and then I have to OR them together. And that's where my final OR gate comes, where I OR those two pieces together and I get my output Y. So there's my circuit. And here's my truth table. I have four different inputs. So I need four uh, inputs across the top, giving me 16 rows. And then I'm going to write one column for each gate on my picture. So we have M or N gets a column. Then I'm gonna invert that, that gets a column. I'm gonna invert P right here with its column. I'm gonna and that together with Q. And then I'm, I'm going to compute the output by taking OR for these two inputs. So here's M or N. Then I'm going to invert it. I'm going to take P and invert it. Notice P is right here. So two zeros, two ones all the way down. So if I invert it, I have two ones, two zeros all the way down. Then I'm gonna take not P and AND it with Q. So I have Q, this column here, and not P, this column here. Draw some arrows on your paper and perhaps use a highlighter to make sure that you're looking at the right columns when you do this. So we have Q and not P. Q and not P. And we're going to fill in that output right there. And then our final step is to take P, I'm sorry, not P and Q. We're going to OR that with this column right here. Because those are the two things going into the OR gate. We had the output of this inverter shown right here. We had the output of this AND gate shown right here. And then we're going to OR those two columns together to get our final output. So that's the end of this video. As usual, if you have questions, you can email me through my Valencia College email address. Send me a Canvas message if you are a current student or comment on this video.